Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at something that's been in Lightroom for a while but I still see people doing it the hard way. And that is simply uh, when you have photos in Lightroom and you want to email you know, maybe a copy of the photos to your client or the, you know, the model or whoever else. Um, what I see people still doing to this day is exporting those photos out and then manually attaching them to an email program. And I even catch myself doing it the old way because that's the way it was prior to Lightroom 4. Now, of course, Lightroom 4 and Lightroom 5 um, have email built in, so you don't have to manually export them out to a folder first. There are also some caveats and things that you should know about creating presets. So that's what this is really about. It's more about the presets and uh, taking a different look at how you might use this feature than it is for you know the time saving aspect, which is also important. So let's go ahead and take a look. I've got a folder here of images, some images um, that I've used for, or product images that were shot for Ink and Slide. Uh, let's, uh, Adobe Ink and Slide, I should say. So let's go ahead and say that I wanna email three of these out. Well, I could go up and do an export, you know, choose my settings and export them to a folder and then manually go find them and then put them in an email program. Or I could just go down a little further right there where it says email photos. When you bring this up, by default, it will look to see if you're using an email program, and it I am, I'm using Apple Mail, and it will find it. Um, that way you can just go ahead and put in your two, your subject, and it will send those photos over to Apple Mail for you to, and bring up a new email message and attach them all ready to go. Now, if you're not using Apple Mail or Windows, whatever mail account you're using, you can go into, um, the email manager and you can even specify your SMP, SMTP settings for sending your email via your ISP, your email address and add it as a setting and Lightroom will actually email the photos as an email client itself. Now of course since I like to manage all my email in one spot I don't want email sent from one application that doesn't show up necessarily in the other application so I like to keep it all in Apple Mail. Now, of course, we can get into the technicalities. If you have an IMAP account, it should be okay, but I still like to just do it all from the same email program that I use for everything else. Um, now with that, the three files are attached, and if I go down to presets, uh, Lightroom's got some presets built in. It's got small, 300 pixels at low quality, 500 pixels on the longest edge at medium quality, large is 800 pixels uh, on the long edge at high quality, and then full size. Now, of course, these are great, these are some nice starters for if you're maybe sending someone just a quick you know look at this photo then maybe you, you want to send it at medium quality if you're sending someone something that they may want to print you may want to send it at full quality but i like to send my web images higher than 800 but lower than full quality so neither one of these kind of fit what i like to do therefore i'm going to jump down to create new preset when i say create new preset um i have got a bunch of export presets as you see here but more importantly, it shows me that it's going to export for email versus to the hard drive, which is what it normally does. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, export to email. I don't need to do any file. And then I just walk through the settings. I don't need to do any file renaming. I'm not doing really any videos at this point, but I could say include video files and what format to put those out in as well if I were emailing them. Uh, and then we get down to the file settings. Now, this is important because this will determine kind of how your image looks as well. For web email on screen look, I typically do sRGB because that's what most operating systems are running in. For print, I typically do uh, Adobe RGB 1998, which is a wider color gamut. Uh, and then of course, quality will depend on, you know, again, what is it gonna be used for? I usually like to bump up the web, bump up the quality for my web images because if they're gonna post it on Facebook, Facebook kind of really crunches down the photo and it doesn't look as good. So I like to give them something that starts out looking as good as maybe possible. And then when Facebook crunches it down, it doesn't look as bad. So for quality, I'm going to go ahead and bump it up to maybe 70-ish, 75-ish. So we got it 75. And then here's where I like to go in and change what I want the actual size of the image to be. Now, like I said, uh, 800 was the large that Adobe gives you as a, as a default. I'm going to go ahead and change mine to 1024. I like to do that. Maybe 1280. You know, something a little bit larger because they may want to use it as a cover photo. They may want to use it as the background to their you know web page or whatever. So something a little bit bigger than normal. 
Um, and of course, 72 pixels per inch. But if the image is, for whatever reason, smaller than 1024, then I don't want it to enlarge it or res it up. Now, next one is output sharpening. I typically don't do that because I, I found that, especially for web images, it might over sharpen it a little bit because I've already sharpened it you know, during the post-processing process. And then uh, metadata, this is kind of important because this will determine what goes inside the photo, which if the photo is being placed online could make the photo more searchable or less searchable depending on what you want. Right now it defaults to copyright only info. So it would just say copyright Terry White and that's all it would be. So if you search for Terry White, you might find that photo. But if I say, give me the copyright and contact info, then you might find my website along with the photo. If I say all info, all except the camera and camera raw info, then it will give me any keywords or anything, any description or title or anything that I put in the metadata. Uh, but it wouldn't give me the exif data, like what camera it was shot with, what the settings were. If I don't care about all that, I can say all metadata, put it all in. But then there's this important checkbox that we check by default to remove location info. Now you might geotag landscape Im images because you, you, you want people to know where the image was shot and that's great. But if you used your cell phone or your smartphone and you shot some images at home and without thinking about it, more than likely those images have location info in them too. So if you email those out, then you're potentially giving away where you live because that metadata is inside the photo. So that's why for privacy sake, it's removing that location info by default. If you're sure that none of the photos you're gonna be emailing contain any sensitive location information, then go ahead and turn that off. Um, last but not least, watermark. Now I took the liberty under the Lightroom menu of putting in my own custom watermark. And for my web images, I like it to use my custom watermark. For my print images, I don't. So now instead of hitting export, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and save this. I'm gonna go ahead and add it in so it'll be in the list with all the others. And I'm gonna call this email for web, okay? Now before we leave, before we go back to the uh, dialog box, we can do another one while we're here. So we can just change whatever settings we need to change. So I'm gonna go ahead and do Adobe RGB and I'm going to go ahead and bump up the quality because this one's going to be for print maybe even more maybe even all the way and the long edge instead of um, 1024 I'm going to make it 3000 pixels at 300 pixels per inch again don't enlarge it all the location information is fine but don't put the watermark on and let's go ahead and add this one in as well so you can do as many of these as you may think you need email for print uh, and if you want more, just rinse and repeat. Just keep doing more of these uh, for all the different scenarios where you might email with a watermark, email without, email with location information, email without. So for example, you can go ahead and keep adding more of these in. Now that I've got these the way I want, I can go ahead and say export. That'll take me back to the uh, same dialog box. And now I have that choice, email for print, email for web, or any other ones I've created. So I'm going to go ahead and say email for web. Again, if I knew who it was going to, knew their email address, I can go ahead and type it in. Um, take a look at these three as a subject. Um, and of course, once I say email, it will go ahead and crank out those three images. It will launch my email program, attach those three images, again, with the watermarks as indicated uh, for these three, because I want the watermarks on there. If you didn't, just turn that off and it put in my subject. Now I can put in any additional text I want, uh, talk to whoever I want to say, whatever message I want to put above or below these images. And of course I could put in all the addresses where I want this to go, all the carbon copies, so forth and so on, and then hit, uh, hit the send button once it's addressed. So that's how easy it is. Once you've got that set up to email photos from Lightroom to anyone you want in the world, and again, you set up presets for all the different scenarios of how you'd want those photos emailed. So I want web quality, print quality, with watermark, without watermark, with location, without location, how many ever one ways you want to do it. That's it for this episode. Hope you learned something. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh.